If you've come here for the Beatles, well, we'll be getting around to them later. First of all, a bit of history. Oh, hang on, just get that. The iconic and beautiful St Mary's Church, and later the St John's Wood Synagogue, were built on Abbey Road to serve the area's two main religious communities. Next down Abbey Road we have another religious name, Priory Road. But this was an 1850s invention of a name, made to sound ancient. In the 1840s large villas were built along Abbey Road in a number of different styles. After 1851, slightly less exclusive properties were built on the western side. Next up is Belsize Road, another made up name. It sort of leads to Belsize Park but doesn't really get there, Swiss Cottage being in the way. Over the railway we go. And on the east is the Alexandra Road Estate, more commonly and erroneously referred to as simply Rowley Way. It was designed in 1968 by Neve Brown of Camden Council's Architects Department. Construction work commenced in 1972 and was completed in 1978, and it's made from white, unpainted, reinforced concrete. Boundary Road here marks a former boundary between the parish of St Maribyrn and the parish of St John Hampstead. Nowadays it's also here that we enter the city of Westminster as it's still the boundary. Next up is Carlton Hill. Carlton Vale stretched over the valley of the Westmore over in Maida Vale, and Carlton Hill climbed out of the valley, reaching Abbey Road here. After Carlton Hill we have the sheer unimagination of London road namers at work. The earliest street to honour the first Duke of Marlborough was Great Marlborough Street, begun in 1704, the year of his victory at Blenheim. The Duke died in 1722, but he and his battles are found in street names all over London, even in the newest suburbs. In Chiswick, Harrow, Croydon, Sutton and Leytonstone, Blenheims are situated close to Marlborough's. And here in St John's Wood, Blenheim Road is closely followed by Marlborough Place. The Abbey National Building Society was founded in 1874, founded as the Abbey Road and St John's Wood Permanent Benefit Building Society in a Baptist church on Abbey Road. EMI's Abbey Road studios are located at the southern end of the road. Since 1970, this section of Abbey Road has been featured on the London tourism circuit. In 2010, the crossing here was given Grade 2 listed building status by English Heritage. The Beatles took ages to name their 1969 album. One idea had them calling it Himalaya and then flying off to Nepal to do a photo shoot for the album cover. But such was the state of inter-band relationships nobody ended up being bothered to go to that much effort. A photographer called Ian Macmillan was a friend of John and Yoko and during the morning of Friday the 8th of August 1969 he found himself commissioned to take a photo of the Fab Four to adorn their latest studio release, an album they finally decided to call Abbey Road. Macmillan used a Hasselblad camera with a 55mm wide-angle lens. As a group waited outside the studio for the shoot to begin, Linda McCartney took a number of extra photographs. 
The 8th of August 1969 was a very warm day in London. Paul McCartney was wearing sandals. A policeman positioned himself at the junction of Abbey Road and Grove End Road behind a photographer. He temporarily stopped the traffic. Macmillan mounted a stepladder for a few minutes and took six shots while the Beatles crossed the zebra crossing. In four of the photographs, McCartney walked barefoot. For the other two, he wore his sandals since he was finding the tarmac on the crossing too hot for his feet. Shortly after the shoot was finished, McCartney studied the transparencies and chose the fifth one for the album cover. It was the only one when all four Beatles were coordinated while walking. It also satisfied their desire for the world to see them walking away from the studios that they had spent so much of the last seven years inside. The B.W. Beetle featured in the final photograph belonged to Malcolm Tanner, who lived in the block of flats opposite the recording studio. After the album was released, the number plate, LMW281F, was stolen repeatedly from the car. In 1986, the car was sold at auction for £2,530. Malcolm Tanner continued to keep a spare set of keys for the car, even after the sale. The man looking back towards the camera in the final photo was named Paul Cole. He died in 2008. Once the cover was released with the fifth photo chosen, it was reported to contain clues that Paul McCartney was dead. Part of the number plate was supposed to read 28 if, i.e. Paul would be 28 if he lived. His eyes are closed, he's out of step with the others, he's smoking and he's barefoot. As all bodies are when buried, obviously. The other Beatles are also particularly dressed. John in white as a preacher. George in jeans like a grave digger. Ringo in black like a pallbearer. After the Beatles went back into the studios after the shoot, Macmillan scoured the neighbourhood for other photo opportunities. On the corner of Abbey Road and Alexandra Road, he found a street sign which he used for the back cover. The street sign on the corner of Abbey Road and Grove End Road is now mounted high on a building on the corner. This saves Westminster Council the expense of cleaning and replacing the sign, which was frequently defaced and stolen. And the council repaints the wall next to the crossing every three months to cover the graffiti. Donna, is that you? You were meant to be here three minutes ago. I'm really sorry. I can't hear you. Donna? Am I on? Okay. Anyway, it took me a long time to find the Abbey Road crossing, but here I am. It's a lot busier than I thought it would be. What? I was told that there would be a lot of people running across the road in front of all the traffic, stopping all the cars. Donna, I sent you to the wrong crossing. But all they do is press a button, the lights go red, and they walk across. Can you hear me? I've sent you to the wrong Abbey Road. I'll have to assume that you can. Anyway, I haven't seen anybody dressed as an undertaker. Or anyone going barefoot. Or somebody bringing up the rear, dressed in denim or anybody looking remotely like Ringo Starr. It's all a bit disappointing. To be honest, I thought that the tourists would be a little friendlier. Oh well. I think I'll go back to the station and head off home.